Hello everyone, it's Joseph from Biden Table, uh, coming to you with our continuing series we call How to Cocktail. Uh, this is the Valentine's Day edition, and we're gonna be doing several things. One of the things that always puzzled me when I ran restaurants is that uh, Valentine's Day happens on the same exact day every year. It's February 14th every year, and yet I would get calls starting, you know, six o'clock on the 13th with people desperate for a table to get you know into the restaurant and so i don't know if guys just like particularly are worse than women uh or if they're just forgetful so this is my kind of reminder course that valentine's day is this sunday and we have a wide arrangement of items uh for you and your significant other um you can have us create a basket like this uh which is absolutely fantastic we have a couple pre-made baskets or we can tailor one to your needs um, we've got a couple of really great items in here. Uh, this is one of our, uh, what we call perfect pairings. So it is a tulip tree creamery trillium, which is made here in Indianapolis and that sour cherry spread. And if you get anything that says perfect pairing here at Vine and Table, it's 10% off both items. We have some amazing chocolates. Uh, my personal favorites are the ones from... Oh. Best chocolate in town. No. My personal favorite is the one from Just Lane. Uh, but I do have one Broke featured. Good. A really good also. And this is just a way to kind of dress up any bottle. So it is uh, two chocolates, that you're two truffles that you can add to anything. Uh, we also have assortment of, of bags and festive ways that you can package your item up. So just a reminder, last call for that this Sunday, Valentine's Day. And if I had a dollar for every time one of my friends was like, you know, Joseph, I get in trouble because I buy so much bourbon, and I think it'd be easier if my wife drank bourbon, but she hates bourbon. Uh, this cocktail is for all of you. So this is a personal cocktail of mine that I've been drinking for quite a while, and uh, I've introduced several of our regular guests to it. I know Bo Kane, shout out to you. I'm sure you're watching this. Um, it's a standard in his house, and it is a great, really well-balanced, but sweeter profile bourbon cocktail. So what it is is a riff on uh, the Manhattan, so it was, I think, 1884 when the very first uh, written recipe for a Manhattan came out, and it was a book called uh, uh, The Modern Bartender's Guide, which is ironic to think that that was over 150 years ago, uh, and it was modern then. But even then, in that first book, it had two different recipes. So one called for um, sweet Italian vermouth, and one called for sweet French vermouth. So I would hypothesize that no drink has been riffed on more than the Manhattan. Um, and because it's really a great cocktail, really well balanced. So the, the basic build for a Manhattan is two parts bourbon, rye, or whiskey, uh, or whatever spirit you use. You can make a really good dark rum Manhattan. Uh, today we're doing bourbon. Um, and so for this cocktail specifically, I like to have something overproof. So the one that I sell and recommend for this is uh, our barrel pick of George Remus, which weighs in at about uh, just over 113.5, so 113.6 um, proof. And the reason that I go overproof on this cocktail is because the mixer I'm using is the Lazzaroni Peach Amaretto, and that is distinctly sweeter than most vermouths. So I like to balance out that sweetness, cut it with a little bit of that higher alcohol, and then, um, you know, the classic would be Angostura bitters uh, to balance out the sweetness of the vermouth. Um, but as many of you know, uh, um, Amaretto is not a almond liqueur. It is an almond cookie liqueur. So the Lazzaroni family, um, they're the ones who created the recipe. It was their, their grandmother's almond cookies that they macerate with uh, liqueur and it becomes uh, Amaretto. This is the first uh, extension line they've done and it's a peach amaretto and it's absolutely delicious so to kind of play on those things together uh, for a bitters i've chosen the fee brothers toasted almond bitters again even with the higher proof booze with this it is a little sweeter uh, so i balance out that sweetness with a couple dashes of the toasted almond bitters so a classic build would be two parts one part two dashes so it would be two parts bourbon rye or rum or whatever you're using one part sweet vermouth and then a couple dashes of angostura bitters uh, for today, I'm doing something a little different. Uh, I'm actually going to be using our, our newest barrel pick of Tumbling Dice because I don't have much of this left and I don't want to open a new uh, a new bottle because I'm cheap. Uh, so this is two ounces of an overproof bourbon. And again, 
with cocktails, especially if you're doing this at home, uh, the importance is proportion. So two ounces exactly. Uh, Hey Josh, will you bring me the ice from the other room? Two ounces of bourbon. And then the classic build would be one ounce of sweet vermouth. But today, uh, because this is so intensely sweet, and I'm giving you permission to riff as much as you want on this recipe or any Manhattan recipe. Um, the important thing is that you, you drink or your partner drinks what you like to drink. So if your partner likes it a little bit sweeter, go ahead and use one ounce or use one and a half ounce. Um, whenever I'm riffing on a cocktail, I tend to make it exactly the way the recipe calls for. So when I first started off with this, I made it exactly two parts, one part, two dashes. And uh, as I tasted that and kind of worked with the recipe, I brought it down to two parts, three quarters of, of an ounce. So, thanks Josh. Um, so, we have that, and then a couple dashes of the toasted almond bitters from the Free Brothers. Um, and again, with this, I would put some healthy dashes in there, not just a couple drops. So there you go. And again, part of the important craft of cocktailing is not only chew, chilling your drink, is allowing it to dilute. Um, so to really properly make a cocktail, most of them require a little bit of water in there. And I will vigorously stir that till the, the chiller gets cold. And then if this was, uh, you know, towards the end of the summer and I could get a ripe peach, uh, but I don't make tomato salads in Indiana in the summer, in the wintertime because they're nasty, uh, cold, pithy, unflavorful ones. But if, I, if this was the middle of summer, I would absolutely put a, a, a ripe slice of peach in this. So what you have here is uh, Joseph's version of a peach Manhattan featuring Lazzaroni uh, peach Mer uh, uh, amaretto, absolutely delicious. Cheers. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, if you liked and enjoyed this video, make sure you like and follow Vine and Table and make sure you share this video. Really appreciate it.